Today's lesson is called graphing cubic, square root, and cube root functions. So we're going to start with some opening exercises. I'd like you to pause the video and try questions one through four, then resume the video when you're ready to go over your answers. Okay, now that you've had a chance to try the opening exercises, let's go through each one. Number one says evaluate x squared when x equals seven. So we're working with x squared. Now, whenever you do substitution, remember that number should go in a set of parentheses. This is extremely important when that value is negative. Without parentheses, we get two different values. Here, seven squared would be 49. For number two, it wants you to evaluate the square root of x when x equals 81. So we're dealing with the square root of x, but we are going to replace x with 81. So the square root of 81 could be a positive or a negative nine. For number three, evaluate x cubed when x is five. So we're working with x to the third power or x cubed. Our substitution, make sure we have parentheses. So we're doing five cubed. That's five times itself three times, which would be 125. Number four, evaluate the cube root of x when x is 27. So it's that square root symbol with a little three on the outside for cube root of x. We are going to find the cube root of 27. So that's what number times itself three times would equal 27, which is just three, not a positive or negative three. So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at square root versus cube root, squared versus cubed, and that's why we wanted you to do those opening exercise activities to see some of the difference already, even with just evaluating them. So now we'll move on to exercise one. Exercise one says using your graphing calculator, create a data table for the functions f of x equals x squared and g of x equals the square root of x for the given values and round decimal answers to the nearest hundredth. So hundredth means we're going two decimal places. Then create the graphs of f of x equals x squared and g of x equals the square root of x on the same set of axes. So at this time, we're gonna go over to our graphing calculator. Okay, on our graphing calculator, we're going to go to our y equals screen, and we are going to type in both of our functions. The first one being x squared. So remember that the variable key is next to the alpha key. And then squared actually has its own button. If you find the seven and go left one and up one, you'll see x squared. Okay, so there's our first function. Use your down arrow or enter to get down to y2. We'll enter both at the same time. G of x is the square root of x. So we're gonna hit second square root, which is the second x squared button. And then you are going to type in your variable of x. And again, either hit down arrow or enter. Now, if we wanna see what these graphs are going to look like to get a preview, remember we will hit zoom and choice six to do it in the standard window. So there's an idea of what we are going to have for our picture. But what we want to do right now is look at the tables. So we're gonna hit second, graph, and this will take us to our table of values. Now our table starts at negative three, so I'm gonna go there to negative three. So what you see under y1, remember, is x squared. You see that we have nine, and if we move down the table, four, one, zero, one, four, nine. So there's that pattern and symmetry that we're looking for. Then in g of x, we have some error messages, and then we start getting into zero, one, and some decimals that we will need to round. So let's go back to our notes and record these values in our table. Okay, for f of x equals x squared, remember we had nine, four, one, zero, one, four, nine. We'll start there. See how even though x was a negative three and x was a positive three, our answer was still nine. That still comes down to that whole idea of parentheses. This in parentheses squared is nine, and three squared is also nine. So just a reminder quickly about why that pattern happens the way it does with a quadratic. Then we'll write down our values for g of x. So we had the expression error, error, error. That's what the graphing calculator said. Then we had a zero and a one, Across from two, we had a longer decimal. So if I round that to the nearest hundredth, it's 1.41. And then across from three was 
Now, I want to talk about these three right here. We got an error message because x is underneath a square root. And these values right here are all negative values. You cannot take the square root of a negative number. So here, we're going to write that these are, we're going to put a little arrow, these would be called imaginary numbers. So if you think back to how we started the year, imaginary numbers were the special situation where you take the square root of a negative number. It's going to give you imaginary numbers. Okay? So that's why you get the error message that you get for those first three. Now, if I go to start graphing, we'll graph f of x equals x squared first, negative 3, 9, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. When we connect them, we're going to make that nice, smooth parabola curve for our quadratic. And remember, this was a snapshot, so you want to continue with arrows here. It did not give us a specified domain that we had to stay within. So show that it continues. And then we're going to label this with f of x. Now we're going to graph our other one. So we've got 0, 0, and 0, 1. Now, the next parts that come in give us some values that can be difficult to graph. So that's why you're going to see on the table of values, I've added two rows. And since g of x is the square root of x, I added two numbers that are perfect squares so that I know they would work out nicely. So if I was to put 4 underneath that square root, that would be the square root of 4, which is 2. Or, of course, you could look at your graphing calculator. If I was to put 9 underneath there, that would be the square root of 9, which would be 3. So these values are going to be easier for us to plot. If I do 4, 2, and then 9, 3, and then I connect arrows on one end and label it with g of x, those other points that we had above, 2, 1.41, 3, 1.73, are now going to be covered by the line that I created or the curve that I created um, when I connected the points that were easier to plot. So always keep that in mind. Plot the points that are nice to plot, and then those awkward values in the middle will automatically be taken care of when you connect your points. Okay? So I'm not even going to worry about filling it in for f of x equals x squared. That was really something we just needed for g of x to make a nice picture. So we've done everything. We've created our table of values and created our graph. So now you can kind of see what happens. It's as if y, uh, f of x equals x squared was tipped on its side, but then the bottom half is missing because we can't take the square root of negative numbers. So that's why you don't see anything below the x-axis for g of x. Okay, for exercise two, it says create data tables for h of x equals x cubed and j of x equals the cube root of x and graph both functions on the same set of axes. Round decimal answers to the nearest hundredth. So we're going to do the same thing we did in exercise one, but this time we're going to use x cubed and the cube root of x. So let's go ahead and go to our graphing calculator. All right, let's go to our y equals screen and we're going to clear out the functions that we had in there before. And now we're going to start with x cubed. So the variable key and here you're going to have to use the caret or insert kind of button for um, cubing or you can go to the math button it's up to you i'm just going to hit the caret to jump it up to an exponent and then going to use the three then if i go down i need to get cube root from the math key so i'm going to hit the math key and you can see if i go down i could have used number choice three to cube it but we had another option and I have to go down to choice four to get the cube root. And now I can put x underneath. Okay, well, we hit our arrow down to make sure everything registered. Let's get a preview of what the graph will look like by hitting zoom six. So now you can kind of see what's about to happen. And now we'll look at our table by doing second graph. So we, again, are starting at negative three. You can see that x cubed has nice values. Cube root of x has some values that will be challenging to graph, but of course we can take a look at them. And we are following the same directions as before, rounding to the nearest hundredth. So let's head back to our notes and complete our table. 
All right, for x cubed, if I plug in a negative 3, I have negative 27. And again, I'm just taking this from the graphing table as well. Negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, 8, and 27. So it's different here with cubed because if you think about it, if you're cubing something, you have an odd number of factors. So that's why we're allowed to have negatives, and you'll see more negatives with x cubed and with cube root of x. Okay, so there's the first one. Then for cube root of x, which was j of x, we have negative 1.44, remember rounding to the nearest hundredth, negative 1.26, negative 1, 0, 1. Then we have 1.26 and 1.44. Now if we wanted to find other numbers that have a nice cube root, um, it wouldn't be another one um, until we'd want an x value of 8. If you had an x value of 8, what number times itself 3 times gives you 8 is a 2. So that is helpful, and you can find those other ones. But if you go much past that, we're not going to fit on the 10 by 10 grid. So let's go over and plot our points. Obviously, negative 3, negative 27 is not going to fit on this plot, and that's okay. We'll jump down to negative 2, negative 8. Then we have negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Then we have 2, 8. And of course, again, 327 will not fit. So you saw from looking at the graphing calculator that you kind of have this snake-like curve for h of x, which is x cubed. Then for the cube root of x, I bet you can think of what's going to happen just like before turns on its side. So let's see. We have negative 3 and then negative 1.44. Now that can be very difficult to plot. So maybe what we would want to do is like we did before up here, if I had a negative 8, the cube root would be negative 2. So I'm going to actually plot negative 8, negative 2, and then I'll plot negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and then I will plot 8, 2, and then those other values that were difficult to graph will be taken care of when we make our curve. And then this is j of x. So now we have successfully gotten a table of values, and it's okay to add to it to make your graphing easier. And now we have created the graphs. And you can see a similar thing has happened. It has turned it, but this time, because it was cube root of x, we're allowed to have negatives, and that's why you see portions of the graph that are below the x-axis. So now that we've taken a look at both of those, we are going to be using these functions as we move forward in the chapter. So we want to talk about our newest ones. We've talked about x squared before. We're going to talk about our newest functions, square root x, x cubed, and cube root x, and talk about some important notes and summaries of all of these graphs. Okay, so let's start with g of x is the square root of x. We're going to say that negative values for the input produce an error. So negative values for the input, which remember input is x, produce an error. So the problem here is that you can't take the square root of a negative, so we're going to have imaginary numbers. Okay, so that's a special characteristic of the square root of x. Okay, now we're going to look at domain and range because we always talk about domain and range for our functions, so it's good to compare those. So we're talking about the square root of x. That's the one that kind of started at 0, 0 and was a low curve shooting out to the right, if you want to go back and look in your notes. Okay, we have domain, which is our x values. Our domain x values started at 0 and went to the right. So that's x is greater than or equal to 0. For our range... Remember we talked about the fact that we can't have negative values here, so we had no values below the x-axis, which means y also has to be greater than or equal to 0. If we talk about a relationship between these graphs, g of x is a reflection of f of x over it's the diagonal line, okay, which would be y equals x, so over the line 
y equals x, but only in the first quadrant because like we talked about, the bottom's kind of missing because of the fact that we can't have negatives. Now, when we go to h of x equals x cubed and j of x equals the cube root of x, the first thing I'm going to write is actually the same for both of them. They share common points between the two of them. So we'll write it once and we'll put an arrow over to the other side. So common points with j of x are negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1. So we'll kind of draw an arrow and we'll just say common with h of x because, of course, this is j of x. So it's the same idea. They share those common points, okay? When we look at domain and range, so let's do that next. Domain and range for the h of x equals x cubed. If you take a look at that graph, it's going on forever in both directions. So that's all real numbers for the domain or x values. And it's also all real number for the range or y values. And then if I want to look at it in terms of transformations, we have a reflection of j of x. So if I went to look at j of x, I would reflect that over the line y equals x. So again, that diagonal line, y equals x, right? y equals x looks like this, has a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 1. Okay, same thing over there with g of x. And then over here, if I look at domain and range, for the cube root of x, we still have all real numbers for both. And then if I go to describe it using reflections, it's going to be very similar to the other one, just the other function. So it's a reflection of h of x, which is x cubed, over the line y equals x. So now looking at this chart, you can see similarities and differences. And now you've been exposed to these new three functions that we can now use for the rest of the chapter. So that concludes your lesson on graphing cubic, square root, and cube root functions.